The Nigeria Customs Service exceeded its 2019 revenue target by 404 billion naira, though the federal government gave it a target of 937 billion naira. The Customs Service raked in a total revenue collection of 1.34 billion naira. The Comptroller General of the Customs Service, Hamid Ali, announced the sharing news this Monday in Abuja at the celebration of this year's International Customs Day. KBTV's Joy Isikwe has the details. International Customs Day is celebrated annually on January 26. The day is set aside to recognize the role of customs officials and agencies in maintaining border security. It focuses on the working conditions and challenges that customs officers face in their jobs. Commemorating the day this Monday in Abuja, the Comptroller General Hamid Ibrahim Ali urged officers to work assiduously towards actualizing the true message and intentions of the World Customs Organization as envisioned in this year's theme, Customs Fostering Sustainability for People, Prosperity and Planet. Ali, a retired colonel, says, The Customs Service has been working tirelessly to achieve its goals, has exceeded its revenue collection target for 2019, as set by the federal government. United last year was 1.341 trillion. Uh, that is about 404 billion over and above the set target last year. This year we're working on the target. We, the federal government gives us target. We're still working on the target. And that is based on a lot of parameters. Uh, we're looking at the economic development. We're looking at the prosperity before we decide how much we're going to we should be generating. We need a process and a situation whereby our border is secured and we are guaranteed that all the manners that we are observing in our borders will no longer be there. And we're working on those parameters. And uh, I believe as soon as we are able to get to them, uh, we will relax certain things at the border. But for now, we, we, we are still conducting our partial border closure under the, uh, the, the drill. Presenting a paper on this year's team, Customs Fostering Sustainability for People, Prosperity and Planet, a GPT Commandant, i.e. Idede, says the Customs Service works to ensure the protection of international property rights, foster sustainability, protect counterfeit products from entering the local market, fight against transnational organized crime and terrorism, amongst others. Idede speaks further on the challenges facing the Nigerian Customs Service. One of the major challenges facing the Nigerian Customs Service is corruption. Nigeria generally like to cut corners in most of the things they do. An importer will bring in goods and we do not want to pay the correct duty. Another major challenge is funding. More funding should be provided for NCS to upgrade its equipment across the country. For the Director General National Biosafety Agency, Rufus Ebegwa, the recent closure of Nigerian land borders is a tremendous development as it has resulted to boosting the nation's economy. I see the Nigeria Customs Service as a become of economic prosperity of our nation and the security of our borders. The recent policing of our border, particularly in the area of smuggling, and ensuring that foreign rights don't come into our country has expanded our economy and also enhanced domestic production of rice. The DG Nigeria Copyright Commission, John Asen, commended the efforts of Customs Service in monitoring what goes in and out of the country. He pledged his commission's preparedness to work with the Customs Service to fight piracy. Very often we don't understand the correlation between the Customs Service and the protection of intellectual property and the sustainable development of our creative sector. So for us, we have come to see that without the customs, there's no way we would have been able to fight piracy in Nigeria. Therefore, we are thankful to uh, the customs authorities, and we think this is an opportunity for us to renew our synergy and collaboration with the customs service. The Comptroller General assured that the drive towards free, safe and secure movement of goods and persons across the borders by the service will be sustained for the benefit of all. Joy is Reporting for Clearview Television. Leaders of the various ex militant camps in the oil rich Niger Delta region says the relative peace being enjoyed in the region due to the presidential amnesty program put in place by the late President Omar Mosiyar Adua is being threatened. 
In an open letter to the coordinator of the program, the camp leaders have distanced themselves from the monitoring and evaluation committee which has concluded plans to carry out a recapturing of beneficiaries of the program. The exercise, the leaders say, if allowed to go ahead without the involvement of the national leader, General Young, the Young Shagro will lead to the inclusion of non-beneficiaries and the short changing of genuine repentant militants who had laid down their arms for peace to reign in the region. While restating their total objection to the Monitoring and Evaluation Committee and its planned recapturing exercise, the state chairman pledged their willingness to cooperate with the federal government in collaboration with Amnesty International to carry out a comprehensive forensic audit to check the corruption in the Amnesty Program Office. They also called for the implementation of the White Paper Agreement signed by the agitators and the federal government on the proclamation of the Niger Delta Presidential Amnesty in 2009. The S militants say it is surprising that after a high-powered meeting with various camp leaders in Calabar, of which a communique outlining the various challenges was presented to the program coordinator, Professor Charles Dokubo, by the national leader, General Young Shagro. The issues are yet to be addressed to vote. The aggrieved as militant leaders have therefore called for a high-powered meeting with the leadership of the amnesty program within two weeks to address issues contained in the communique to halt the increasing agitations in the Niger Delta region. The open letter, which was copied to the offices of the National Security Advisor, to the President, the Inspector General of Police, the Director General, Department of State Security Services, and Chairman, Senate Committee on Niger Delta Amnesty Program, was signed by the group's Bayesa State Chairman, Toriomo Excel, Imo State Chairman, Amechi Adibo, Delta State Chairman, Awe Akuke, Edo State Chairman, Appearance Agahaga, and Rivers State Chairman, Bob Aliko. An FCT High Court this Monday sentenced Marian Sander, the lady who stabbed to death her husband, Billy Yaminu, son of a former national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Haliru Balu, to death by hanging. Delivering judgment, Justice Yusuf Halilu convicted Sander based on the doctrine of last sin. Halilu said the doctrine places the burden of proof on the accused, who was the last person to be seen with the deceased. Halilu held that from evidence before him, if it was irredeemably clear that the accused fatally stabbed the deceased, adding that the two extrajudicial statements made by the convict were not disputed. The evidence of the convict was unreliable and circumstantial evidence is used in the place of eyewitness accounts. Halilu in sentencing Sander held that from the entire circumstances of the case, Justice to the society and to the deceased outweighs other elements of justice to the defendant. He said, she should reap what she has sown, blood for blood. For it has been said that thou, thou shalt not kill, and whoever kills in quote blood deserves death as his or her own reward or punishment. He said Sander should be remanded in Suleja Correctional Center until the convict exhausts her right of appeal in the Court of Appeal. The police arraigned Sander for stabbing her husband with a broken button at about 3.50 a.m. on November 18, 2017. The police also accused Maimuna Aliu, Sander's mother, Aliu, her brother, and Sadia Aminu, her hus housemate, of tampering with evidence by cleaning the blood and other proofs from the crime scene. But charges were later dropped. However, Halilu discharged her co-defendants after they filed a no-case submission and ordered her to enter her defense. The prosecution called six witnesses while the defense called two, the convict being one of the defense witnesses. Accordingly, I hereby sentence Mariam Sander to death by hanging until she dies. This 
The national chairman, People's Democratic Party, PDP, Ute Sakandos, has called on the National Assembly to immediately commence the process of electoral reform that will lead to the conduct of a transparent election in the country. The PDP national chairman made the call at the 88th NEC meeting of the party held in Abuja, the Nigeria's capital. Clever TV's Edward Aidoin has more. The 88th NEC meeting of the People's Democratic Party PDP brought together the party leaders to review recent political events, particularly as they affect the judgment of the Supreme Court on governorship elections in some states, particularly Imo State. Former governors, state chairmen, and other top echelons of the party were all in attendance. Those who could not make it to the next meeting sent a message. The PDP national chairman Uche Secondos used the forum to call on National Assembly to speed up the process of the electoral reforms. He said the nation is fast drifting towards a one-party state and only a PDP-led government could save the situation. As the issue of the last general election wraps up with the conclusion of court cases, the National Working Committee, NWC, and NEC is putting machineries in place to review the 2019 general election with a view to projecting for the future. We expect members to cooperate with such review and assessment committee to enable them to get the root of the election challenges in our country. NAS, National Assembly and Electoral Reform. If the nine assembly is concerned about growth of democracy in our country, they should take urgent needful steps to save democracy by making amendments of the electoral acts a top priority. Secondo said the PDP National Working Committee is proceeding on a reconciliation tour of the country to bring our grave members back to the food. When Mr. President, Mohammed Buhari and his party began the process of modeling the other arms of government. Our party cried out and alerted the nation and indeed the international community of the brain dictatorship. Here we are watching helplessly as the legislature and the judiciary are put right in their pocket of the executive. And our memory in our democracy that makes nonsense of the suppression of power that is beautifully enshrined in the rule book to check the excesses of each arm of the government. Sokodo State Governor Aminu Tamboa, who doubles at the Chairman PDP Governors Forum, also spoke on behalf of the governors on how to deepen democracy in the country. We assure you, as your governors, that we shall continue to work together in unison, in unity, and work with the National Working Committee and leadership of the party in ensuring that the programs of the party, especially in our respective states, in line with our manifestos, are implemented. And we shall also continue to support the party in its growth, the right of membership, and development. All of the issues that the chairman has raised in this speech today, we are taking them, and by the grace of God, we shall work together with them in ensuring that we deepen democracy in our dear country. Other stakeholders of the party say they are working around the clock to clean power in the coming elections. Uh, we are taking note of what you have said about uh, our working very hard on the electoral reforms. Also, we are taking note of every other thing that you have mentioned here today. And I can assure you that the National Assembly will do the needful. We have a duty as a party. As you can see, the way is that we have a duty to do whatever is possible to ensure that we contribute in building a better nation. PDP remains a party of choice in our dear country today, and our commitment and coming together will inevitably make that work. Mine is to appeal to all of us. This is time for us to come together. 
Members of the National Executive Committee later went into a closed door. Edward Adoni, reporting for Clevy Television.